Well, good morning. Here in Pennsylvania, where I'm making this video on uh, early part of April 2020, we are in the coronavirus shutdown. So I would think that would mean I'd have a lot of extra time on my hands to make videos, but it seems like I've been pretty busy helping my students with their schoolwork, being their homebound, and uh, grading tests and things that are coming in to me and answering phone calls. But uh, here we are. We want to get started on page 1131. We're going to talk about pages two and three. This is, there's only two pages left. And I just kind of went through a, a quick look through this whole pace. This is actually kind of a fun one, all right? Um, you're going to see some things that are very different from anything you did back in junior high, anything you did in uh, Algebra 1, Geometry, some very unique concepts, okay? But they are math. Um, they will only seem hard because they are different. I say that a lot. This isn't hard, it's just different. And uh, we're going to experience that a lot as we work our way through this pace. So one of the first concepts I want us to talk about <clears throat> it's here on page two and three, and it's called permutations. Permutations is thinking about how many ways can numbers be put together. And maybe it's following a rule. Maybe it's uh, we have a limited number of elements of the set. So one of the first things they talk about is ordered pairs. So an ordered pair is we take one element from this set, and we're going to match it to the elements in this set. So we could list them out and say, well, I could match with the 5, I could match a negative 4, I could have 5, negative 3, I could have 5, 1. Okay, so that right away you've got three of them. Now you can do the same thing with 10. You can do the same thing with 15. You can do the same thing with 20. Now the long way would be to write them all out and then count them up. But thankfully, there is a much easier method. And that is when we are doing ordered pairs, we're trying to find ways that these numbers combine to make two, a set of two, is we just count. One, two, three, four. I have four in this set. I have one, two, three elements in this set. And so we're just going to multiply them together and get 12. It's that easy, okay? They do an example of that on page two. They have a whole section, the top of page three, that you don't even have to worry about what the elements are, okay? And um, in fact, you know, I could, I thought about putting in here the number pi instead of an actual number number, and you could do that because it still is an element of this set. So you just count the elements of both of those sets, multiply them together. Those are the easy ones. Let's talk about a couple other types of problems that are permutations. Here's one. Let's find all the possibilities of three-digit numbers that are even numbers. All right, so whenever we do these, we have to set up what I call a template. A three-digit number, we're going to have three blanks. Now, what are some of the rules here that have to apply? Well, how many digits are there total? You might say nine. A lot of students think, oh, there's nine numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine. Don't forget, zero is a digit. Okay? So, in the middle, we definitely can have ten different digits. If these are, if this is going to be an even number, then that means the last digit is kind of limited. It can only be two, four, six, eight, or zero. Okay, so we could include zero as the last digit. So we have five possible numbers that could go in the last digit. All right, since it's even. Now, because it's a three-digit even number, would I put a 10 here in the beginning? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Oh, wait a minute. I can't really have a three-digit number that starts with zero, right? I wouldn't say that's a three-digit number. We would ignore the zero and say, ah, you wrote it wrong. It should only be 56, okay? Now, I could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine as the first digit. So we have nine possible numbers as the first digit. So then, to figure out how many three-digit even numbers exist, we would need to multiply those three numbers together, okay? So 90 times 5, 450, okay? 
How about four digit odd numbers? One, two, three, four. Similar idea, we have one through, ten, one through nine and zero, so we have 10 possible numbers. Now I'm only gonna do odd numbers. So let's think about the odd numbers. One, three, five, seven, nine. I guess that's it, right? So there are five possible odd digits. For these two in the middle, we, we can use any of the 10, okay? Since it is um, a four digit number <clears throat> of the 10 possible digits, similar to here, I can use nine of those 10. I just can't use zero. So I would put nine there. So that would be 9,500, 9, right? 10 times 10 is 100, 45 times 100, 4,500. All right, <clears throat> let's think about uh, this one. How many six-digit numbers could I make using only these digits? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I can count up how many do I have. So the important thing here is how many. One, two, three, four, five. I have five numbers to choose from instead of 10. Like here we had 10 numbers to choose from, any digit. Here I'm limited to only using these five possible digits. We're not told even or odd, so I can use all five as the last digit, all five here, all five here, all five here. Can I have zero as the first digit? No. Okay, that would not be a legitimate six digit number. So of these five numbers, only four of them work to go there. That's all there is to it. Multiply them all together. So you can take your calculator and multiply all those out and get an answer. We would know how many possible numbers you could have using those digits. All right. I don't think you'll find pages two and three to be too hard. We have some fun things coming up, though. So stay tuned.